On the 26th day of October, Halloween gave to me 26 Busey's Haunting, 25 Isabel's Freaking, 24 Vincent's Farming, 23 Cushions Ghouling, 22 Ruggers Glaring, 21 Babies Killing, 20 Horsehead Snorting, 19 D's Renting, 18 Franks Perving, 17 Angels Stripping, 16 Demons Jazzercising, 15 Runes on Parchment, 14 Joseph's Whispering, 13 Seniors Bleeding, 12 Creepy Masks, 11 Dancing Demons, 10 Catholic Monsters, 9 Priests a Miracling, 8 Jerry's Vamping, 7 Jody's Oinking, 6 Body Swapping, 5 Reeds a Wolfing, 4 Drunken Uncles, 3 Werewolf Colonies, 2 Spooky Sisters, and a Psycho Who Killed Janet Lee. Well, hey there, everyone. Welcome to the 26th day of October here, and thus the 26th film in our 31 Days of Halloween celebration. We are talking today about uh, a a little movie uh, called The Frighteners, directed by Peter Jackson, written by Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh. This is, interestingly to me, the movie that Peter Jackson did right before he started work on all of the Lord of the Rings stuff. And it was produced by Robert Zemeckis, who, of course, directed all the Back to the Future stuff, as well as, in his later years, all of those uh, CGI, you know, uh, Polar Express and Grendel movies and whatnot. And it's a weird blend of those two things in my mind. Um, If you've never seen The Frighteners, The the Frighteners is the story of uh, a guy named Frank, played by Michael J. Fox, and he has the unique ability... To see ghosts. Not only does he see ghosts, uh, he can communicate with them and has struck a deal with them so that he uh, essentially works as kind of a con man where he gets the ghost to scare people, uh, hence the, the title, The Frighteners, and then he makes sure that whoever it is that is being scared uh, has his card and they call him up and he comes over and basically gets his buddy ghost to stop doing all the haunting stuff. Unfortunately for Frank, uh, there is more than just uh, his buddy ghost uh, afoot. There is a, uh, a grim reaper looking creature um, and it is basically running amok in the this town. I think it's called Fairview, I think the town is, much like Psycho at any rate. And so Frank suddenly finds himself in a situation where he is trying to save the life of uh, people who bear a mark on their forehead with a number. And we also learn pretty quickly that this, you know, demonic ghost that is going around harvesting people by jamming his claw into their chest and squeezing their heart um, is also able to kill ghosts. And so uh, Frank and his team of ghost buddies embark on an adventure to save the lives of the people of this small town, including a young woman uh, who is recently widowed and uh, that it, that is starting to form a bit of a relationship with Frank. So those are the broad strokes of the story. And one of the reasons that I wanted to, to put the Frighteners on this list this year is it had been a long, long time since I'd seen it. And that's, you know, sort of a... A refrain you have heard me use often uh, during these 31 days of Halloween that these are uh, movies in a, in a lot of circumstances that I remember seeing forever ago and I, it's been a long time and the 31 days of Halloween is not only a way for me to recommend some movies to you but it's a way for me to go back and watch some of these movies and give myself a good reason to revisit some of these uh, these stories and what I like most about The Frighteners is that it is just that. It's kind of a fun story. As I said, it was written by Peter Jackson and and Fran Walsh, and it has that kind of goofy slapstick spirit of something like Dead Alive or Brain Dead, depending on where you came from. And that sort of fun spirit uh, really permeates the film, but it's got a really dark uh, quality as well that I really like. In fact, one of the, the first sequences that you see is uh, this creature that is sort of running along the walls and carpets 
Um, in some, you know, CGI that was probably better in its day, but it's still not the worst you ever saw. Uh, trying to kill poor D. Wallace. And uh, D. Wallace is uh, terrific in it. She's a lot of fun as a girl who is released from prison after having been associated with uh, the crimes uh, perpetrated by one Jake Busey, who shot up an asylum uh, before being put to death by electric chair. And her mother, uh, D. Wallace's mother, is this creepy old lady who kind of keeps her away from everyone and uh, uh, won't let her outside and so forth. And uh, then you have, you know, as I said, a, a love interest for Michael J. Fox, as played by Trini Alvarado, who plays Lucy Linsky. Uh, Trini Alvarado uh, was in the movie Polly and Little Women and uh, seems to have stopped working as of about 2014, but was in a bunch of stuff uh, prior to that. And I really like all these disparate elements. Not only do you have the characters that we've already talked about, you have a fantastic turn from Jeffrey Combs, a, an actor that you will uh, probably know best as Herbert West reanimator. Uh, but Jeffrey Combs is he's just a staple of the genre at this point. He's a terrific character actor. And he plays a very interesting sort of a germophobic, agoraphobic, neurotic police detective, but also uh, is just a, a creep and a self-confessed asshole. And uh, he's just wonderful. I love seeing uh, Jeffrey Combs in roles like this where he just gets to let his freak flag fly. And uh, boy, does it in this one. Uh, you also have, you know, uh, Chi McBride uh, playing one of the ghosts. And John Aston, Gomez Adams himself, uh, playing another one of, uh, of the ghosts. Um, called the judge. He's this old guy who, when you see him at the beginning of the movie, somebody has, uh, has stolen his jaw. And yeah, it, and probably the judge is the best character in the movie, hands down, aside from Jeffrey Combs, um, weirdo detective. But, uh, John Aston is just a hoot in this movie, uh, as, as a guy who is mostly spinal column and six guns. Um, and, you know, getting back to kind of what I like about all of this is it's just this collection of like weird characters and oddball scenes. And, um, you know, the story plays a little fast and loose with the rules of uh, how these ghosts work. And it kind of introduces stuff along the way in, a, in the grand scheme of things. The script itself is not the best, um, not because it isn't entertaining or isn't fun. It's just a little sloppy and messy and things keep popping up all the time where you're like, oh, okay, well, I guess this is a rule I just didn't know until now. And uh, there are a couple of instances where the solution to the problem is just for somebody to die for a minute um, to, to resolve the problems. Uh, so, you know, in the, is, is it the most satisfying of narratives? Eh, maybe not. But as far as being a good Halloween movie for this time of year... There's something really wonderful about putting on a movie directed by a guy who clearly loves horror movies and is having fun with this idea of ghosts being, uh, you know, these sort of bigger than life personalities like Arlie Ermey, the drill sergeant from um, Full Metal Jacket pops up and has a couple of really fun scenes as well. You know, and it's really just a, an excuse to have all these bits more than it is a coherent narrative. Now, by the time you get to the end of the movie and you're propelling towards the ending and you need that narrative to be a little tighter, eh, it doesn't hold together quite so well. But when the movie is just having fun with its premise, that is when I think the movie really sings. And uh, as I said, just sitting back and, and kind of watching this movie under a warm blanket and letting all the, you know, fun visual effects and gags about ghosts moving through walls and uh, falling through cars and all that stuff. It's just a good time. And that's what I kind of walk away from uh, the Frighteners thinking most is not necessarily about the coherence of it, because I don't know that it's entirely coherent. And I, I, like I said, I don't know that it works entirely well as a narrative. Although, 
you know, it's got the beats to get you from point A to, to point B. But it it's just creative and, and engaging and occasionally very silly. And all of that stuff works together to give you a, a real sense of fun more than anything. A, a good Halloween time. Uh, doesn't hurt that you got Danny Elfman doing the music for this thing. And his score is uh, very, very good. There are times it reminds me a little bit of that Tales from the Crypt uh, uh, theme song that he did, or theme music that he did. And I enjoy all that quite a bit as well. It runs a little long in the tooth at almost two hours. Uh, and like I said, I don't know that by the time you get to the final credits that you're as engaged as you were when, you know, Michael J. Fox is haunting houses and ghosts are flying babies around a room. But it still works, and it's still a good time all the way through. And even at the the conclusion, when you're having this big uh, chase through a chapel at this institution, um, there's great visual gags. There's a particularly good one involving Jeffrey Combs getting shot that I absolutely adore. And so even at the movie's low points, and I say low points even though that I don't know that any of the points in this movie are all that low, uh, but even at those points, there is still something visually fun to kind of uh, rest your hat on and, and keep you going through the story. Um, yeah, The Frighteners is just a really good time. And it and it's amazing to think that this is the prelude to, you know, that 12-hour Lord of the Rings epic. Uh, and, and it's fun, too, because Peter Jackson has a little bit of a cameo in this. and uh, And that's fun to see as well. Uh, see old, old, old chubby Peter Jackson wandering around in this movie, um, Hitchcock style. So I appreciate that as well. It's just a good time. This is not, uh, you know, like when I gave you unreserved recommendations for something like uh, motel hell or the hitcher or something like that. This is a little bit more of a, you know, just kind of put your brain in a jar for a minute and don't think too critically about, uh, the, the character motivations and how all this stuff is supposed to be working. And hey, how come it takes to the end of the movie before somebody is like, oh, and by the way, Dee Wallace was communicating with him with a Ouija board this whole time. All that stuff doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just throw it on. Have a good time. That's what this movie is here for. Uh, I wish it were about 15 minutes shorter and you tightened up some of this. Uh, but I still think it works pretty well. And even though the CGI at this point is going on... Uh, 30 years old and this is one of those movies that you know or 25 I guess is, is the age of the movie but it's one of those things where you hear this movie is 25 years old and you're just like oh good lord what happened to my life but but yeah so uh <laughs> this you know quarter of a century old CGI film still mostly hangs together with uh you know some of the dated effects and there's some practical work too that's very good. The the ghosts in particular are uh, are fantastic. So, yeah, um, if you're looking for something to throw on while you're carving up the pumpkins, the Frighteners is a great ingredient uh, for that recipe. It's a it's a really good time, and I found myself enjoying it quite a bit. Um, am I excited about going back to it in you know six months from now? Eh, probably not. But this this time next year when Halloween's rolling around and I'm thinking about something to throw on in the background while I'm doing some arson crafts. Frighteners is great for that. And you can always perk up when you're like, Oh, Hey, this is, this is the scene where they're going to fly those babies around. That's a good time. Or Hey, Arlie Ermy is about to yell at Michael J. Fox for a minute. That's always kind of fun to watch. Uh, so that's why I enjoy the Frighteners and I hope you do too. If you enjoy the Frighteners, uh, more than me or even less then <laughs> uh, drop me a line. You can find me over at Legion Podcasts. Uh, on the Facebook and the Twitter and the Instagram and all that stuff. So I would like to thank everybody as we're coming to the end of our 31 days for hanging with me for all of these movies. We've got a handful more to go leading up to the big day of Halloween. Uh, and I think we got some some real bangers on the way. And uh, movies I look forward to, to sharing with you and to talking about with you. So uh, by all means, keep the conversation going. Find me on the social media and we'll uh, we'll chat about it there. Um, anyway, we are at a Tuesday, folks. So get out there, do good work, be spooky, 
uh, because we we've only got a little while left to do it. And join me right back here tomorrow for another movie in our 31 days of Halloween. I'll see you then.